What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steven Asantoski here of the Maze and Blue Review. Joining me today, CJ Baird, back with another episode here. Views from the bench. He had a great breakdown here of the 88-76 Michigan win over the Buffalo Bulls. Really, really great article on the rival site, michigan.rivals.com or the Maze and Blue Review.com. Sketchy parts here in the second half. CJ pulled away late. Uh, Jonathan Williams for Buffalo, really, really great player. But you were there. You were there close and personal. What are your brief thoughts from this Michigan victory? Yeah, so I think the most impressive thing about this victory was it was coming off of a pretty emotional night. I mean, they had the banner raising, um, a lot of guys coming back from that team last year. Um, so I think it was impressive, the way, especially the way they came out in the first half um, was especially impressive. There was some foul trouble early. Devontae Jones had a couple of issues. Caleb Houston had issues. But it really showed the depth that Michigan can potentially have. Yeah. But in the second half, like you said, those sketchy parts came out where it's like, we need this depth to be sustainable and it can't just come out in spurts. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see what they do the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. You picked out three plays here. We're going to dive into those real quick. Uh, before we get there, you, I, I heard that you got a souvenir from Michigan raising the banner, obviously a banner ceremony from Big Ten title last year. You got you got a gift from that. You got to show us here on the video what you got uh, from last night, man. Or yeah, so your source your sources are actually correct. Oh. It's uh, the uh, the ring, the 2021 yeah. Michigan Men's Basketball Big Ten Championship ring. Yes, check sir. this out right here. It's be- it's a beauty, and I uh, I mean this is actually my third ring. So let me show you the sides now. They usually detail these to put your name and number on the side here. So people can see it's Baird number 24 from there. Yeah. And uh, one of our mantras was all in last year. And uh, that's around number 24. Then the other side, we have our record from the regular season. So we were at 20 and four last year. This is actually including the uh, Big Ten tournament. Right. But uh, Coach Howard, they threw it on there, showed what we did. Uh, we ended up finishing 23 and five. And uh, this is a great souvenir. Like you said, a little souvenir for a great year last I'm year. Su- so. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't show up to this video with like the Tom Brady look, right? Where you just got all of your <laughs> rings on. But no, man, that's that's awesome. Congratulations, obviously. Thank part you. Of a great Thank team you. and excited to break down these plays, man. You ready to jump into it? Yeah, let's get to it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Just a minute in, and you can already feel the intensity from Buffalo. Tons happening on this play, CJ. I mean, there's just a ton of action. Talk us through what's going on here. Yeah, so actually, one of the first things I wanted to talk about was a lot of people identify an out-of-bounds play and think every single, like, the ball has to be inbounded to score right away. So people think out-of-bounds play, they think, okay, there has to be a right away scoring option. What I think Michigan does really well as a program is they add actions onto things that may not be expected. So you said there's a lot going on here, but I think what's really important to note is it's not an immediate scoring play. A lot has to develop. So as you can see here, Devontae inbounds the ball to Johns at the top and the elbow here. And uh, Eli Brooks cuts in and kind of looks for, looks for the ball. He's throwing his hands in the air. Like I want this pass. Um, There's also on the weak side, if you can leave it right here, Hunter is setting a screen for Caleb Houston. So he's setting a back screen on this play for Caleb Houston, trying to get him open and keep the weak side defenders engaged. So this is all happening. And all this action is in an attempt to get Devontae Jones the ball. So as you can see, if you roll the tape a little bit, watch how they do this little curling action on the block. So Devontae comes back, sets a screen for Eli. As he steps in, UI runs out. Brandon Johns is looking at this side the whole time, too. So this is what he wants. So he's going to hit UI on the wing over here. Nice, quick and easy pass. Devontae Jones set, steps up and sets the screen on the back of Johns' defender. So what this does, this is more of a relief screen. So, I mean, Brandon can go to the rim and score here. But what this is going to do is this is going to actually open up Devontae Jones more. So when he sets this back screen here, if you can roll a tape a little bit, the the guy that's guarding Jones has to step off and help on Brandon Johns. You, if you stop it right here, see number 33 on Buffalo? He puts his elbow on Brandon Johns here, trying to slow him down. And he's got to offer some help to number 34, who's trying to get under the screen to stay with Johns. So when I call this a relief screen, this is just giving Dante Jones an easier path to get the ball. Um, so if you roll a tape even more, 
that little bit of space he needed to go help. See, look at how open Devontae is. Look at how much space is in between those guys now. This pass is really easy. And now if you stop it here again, this distance also makes it easier for Hunter to set the screen. So Hunter is right there. And this guy's his arm length away now, but he's got to, he can't, he can't force Devontae up and get over the screen. He's kind of got to go through the screen now. So if you roll it here even a little bit more, so he, he gets caught. He has to step around the screen. And that single step slows him down just enough where Devontae Jones engages the big man right here. So now it's two guys guarding Devontae Jones. And, of course, Devontae makes this great read as Steven just drew out right there. Um, two guys are guarding him. Nice and easy pocket pass. And Hunter Dickinson, who's clearly been working on that floater, which is something uh, NBA big men do very well, uh, steps up and hits an easy shot. Yeah, and I think that's that's such a great point of like this relief screen you're talking about right here. That that spacing right here, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, right? As soon as this pass is happening, this spacing between the defender and Devontae Jones, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but that's everything because of how hard he has to close out. He doesn't really have an option now because of that closeout, that additional time it's going to take for him to, to get there. Dickinson has, I mean, you just win in this case. There, there's no mm -hmm. way to avoid that screen because the time has to be to make that close out, and that gives everything Dickinson has to do. So, uh, yeah, such a great point of how just just that one step, that one step can set up that just additional setup, and you mentioned the additional pass there. Um, he finds that lane. And then, obviously, we're, you know, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, later in the season. Tons of help coming down here. And it, this just is what Dickinson does. I mean, look at Eli Brooks, right? That's your best three-point shooter here. Um, you like that as a backup option, but you mm -hmm. can't really pass up that floater when Dickinson is uh, right there in the key. Absolutely. And I, I think something that's also of note is I think – if the guy didn't help off to guard Brandon Johns, Brandon Johns would have been open for a layup on this back screen here. Like there's a lot of action that goes on and a lot of different opportunities. Like you said, Eli Brooks is open right there. Johns is cutting to the rim because there's so much attention here. I mean, there's so many options that come from these actions and uh, it's, it's a lose-lose for the defense. You pick your poison pretty much. What do you think you're going to have to give up? And uh, usually it's an easy shot for Michigan. It's who do you want taking it? So, right. yep. Switched when Michigan changed up the defensive approach. Well, Jawan Howard did not like the way that Michigan guarded the first couple possessions. Went zone, and you're right. They have just carved up this Wolverine defense. But first possession here of the second half. Nice little alley-oop to Hunter Dickinson. Let's break it down. CJ, take it away. Yeah, so one thing that I, I think Michigan does really well is they run their plays with pace. So as you see right here, Eli Brooks takes a dribble at Brandon Johns, and look at how he's sprinting. He is going right to the rim, and it's the action is not to get Brandon Johns the ball. While he very well could have right here, the defender wasn't really watching, but Johns really put on the put on the Jets and flew to the rim here, and it caused some confusion in the defense. Just that little sprint really changed a lot. So if you roll the tape, look at he draws a little bit of attention when he runs in there. So the Hunter's the guy that's guarding Hunter has to look at him like, oh, is this guy screening me? Like, what am I gonna do now? So as Brooks brings the ball over here now, Hunter comes and runs up and sets and setting this screen. So as the key here is, as you can see now, if you stop it right here, uh, Caleb Houston is running in from his initial spot in the corner. Um, and this is really important to know again, because it draws, there's a lot of, there's a lot of open side. Now. So Caleb Houston is going to set this back screen after he runs in. So if you stop it right here, yeah, he's, he's even drew it out perfectly. So Hunter's setting the ball screen here and Eli is coming off. Caleb Houston is running to set a back screen on Hunter's man. So what this does is it frees up Hunter going to the rim. See, he makes contact with the big man, and he is, he's stuck. He, he's completely flat on this screen. And actually a term that uh, Coach Beeline used to use, he called it Velcro on the screen. So if you just get stuck to the screen, he called it a Velcro. So when I say Velcro, that's what that means. This guy Velcros to the screen, and he's stuck. Hunter is rolling right to the rim, and Eli get, makes an easy decision. So what happens here now is as Eli is driving, the big man is staring at Hunter. They're both looking at Hunter. They're both watching this play. And when they should be guarding Eli, this is, should be his first priority right now. So if you roll play even more, now Eli's got a lane to the paint. Like he's got so much space to go. 
And since the big man got, if you stop it here again, since the big man got hit on the screen by Caleb Houston, Caleb Houston's guy is actually ends up being the one that should be guarding Hunter. So if you watch this here, if you stop it, actually right here is perfect. Yeah, Jonathan Williams is stuck now guarding Hunter. Now there's two guys guarding Hunter right now. He has to help off because the screen was set so well. And Eli's got a lane to the paint. So if you roll it even more now, Jonathan Williams decides, okay, I'm going to, I'm prioritizing guarding Houston, my man, for three. And he leaves Hunter wide open to the rim to get an easy layup on a great pass by Eli Brooks. Yeah, it's 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 kind of crazy watching this like in slow motion because it's like, where was he going? Where's Jonathan Williams going? Like, yeah. it, I mean, you could argue that like, I mean, I don't think there's any argument. He he needs to pick up Hunter Dickinson in this scenario, but mm -hmm. I mean, this is such a good set where uh, you have a guy who's who has a big man going right into his path. Right, Dickinson is right there, right next to Jonathan mm -hmm. Williams, and uh, Buffalo just completely lets him go up for you know the the easy alley oop. So they're definitely confusing <laughs> Buffalo a little bit out of this half, and uh, you know we'll we'll see this set run again with a different option here. Um, but you're, you're right. And it's good to point out that Caleb Houston's motion here to the three point line, obviously that carries some weight probably in whatever scouting that Buffalo did. They don't really want to give this guy the option out here on the perimeter, uh, with the, with the shot that he has. And I think, I think it's a good point too. Like you said, there's so much confusion. And what I, what I love about college basketball is, and you see this in my, my main complaint about the NBA, actually it's not a complaint, I guess just in thing I wanted to point out <laughs> the guys in the NBA are superstars so sometimes it's get a switch get an advantageous switch and we're gonna go go to work in college the coaches really spent a lot of time putting together these really good plays and um they're more evident in college because you need some more sets to get these guys open right um not that they don't run plays in the NBA but when you see this complicated set in college it really shows the levels and the layers that these coaches look at each play. They think of each option. They think of, if I was this defender, what would I be doing? Right. And that's how we get these plays to work. Yeah, that's yeah, thing beauty. Up to a 12 point lead. Those shots were falling in the first 15 minutes of the second half for Buffalo. They're gonna go right back to it. Here's the ball screen, here's the back screen. Houston, three, got it. The fresh it's a great call by Robbie Hummel there. Right? He said, going right back to it. Talk us through it, CJ. Yeah, and actually, this is one of the reasons I love Robbie Hummel. And the guy's a Purdue legend, great player. And uh, he is a fantastic color commentator. If he's ever on your game, make sure you're watching it. This guy really sees the game really well. And as he says, it's the same play we're running. So Steven and I broke down this exact same play earlier. And Michigan ran this one to perfection. It's kind of a uh, pick your poison type once again. Yep. So if we run through the clip again, it's Terrence Williams runs under the rim and Caleb Houston leaves the corner and comes and sets the back screen on Hunter Dickinson's man. It's the same thing from earlier. But what happens now is, as we broke down in the earlier play, Jonathan Williams, who's guarding Caleb Houston again, is put in the same exact dilemma, which is kind of ridiculous. So Eli Brooks gets this easy lane off the screen, Caleb Houston setting the back screen on Hunter's guy. While Hunter's guy actually saw it a little better, he's way out of position. He went the wrong way to guard the screen. So actually, if you stop it right here, um, the guy that's guarding Hunter is number 42. So see how he goes to the other side here. And that's complete, that's just not the right way to do it. It's tough in game to recognize this, but what needs to happen is he needs to be on the same side as Hunter. So when you're deterring a lob play, you wanna get into the body of the guy you're guarding. So since he is so, there's so much space in between him, it puts more pressure once again on Jonathan Williams as Steven will circle him right there. He has to make the decision again. What am I going to do? What am I going to take away? And uh, Jonathan had a great game offensively. And he's a fantastic player, as you could see from this game. But Michigan makes it really hard, even for the best players, to make their decisions, like snap quick choices. So earlier in the game, if you actually roll it back a little bit, Jonathan left Hunter Dickinson and had and let Hunter get a lob. He remembered that he totally remembered this play because what he does is he stays for one second too long in the paint. So he's standing there and sees Hunter and he's guarding him, like I'm going to get this lob. When in reality, Eli Brooks has got a wide open pass to Caleb Houston, who makes the right read and steps out for three. And then once again, it's beautiful play design by Michigan. Um, actually, if you 
can roll it back even a little bit more um, to where Caleb Houston setting the back screen. He So the key to this play with Caleb Houston pulling out, and I think this is just, again, beautiful design by Michigan. There is nobody in the corner where Caleb Houston came from. So if you look down at, by the scoreboard over here, it's an empty side. So Buffalo has no other options to help. So, like, if somebody was standing there, for example, they could be able to come over and help a little bit on a pass out to Caleb Houston and maybe give Jonathan Williams more time to guard both. But since there's nobody there, Jonathan Williams has to guard the rim because you don't want to give up the easy layup. And so now Caleb Houston's so much more easily. There's nobody helping over there. He's absolutely wide open. There's five blue jerseys in the paint or in that corner, and they're all confused. They're like, they're, we can't help. We, we're all trying to guard our guys. And Caleb Houston gets a wide open shot and actually an extremely key shot in this game to kind of put them away. Yeah. And, and the funny thing, too, is that 34 is, is really confused down here, right? Because mm-hmm. he, he's in the paint. He's noticing there's a back screen going on, on on the weak side here, or I guess kind of away from the play here with Dante Williams. And even if this doesn't work out, even if if – um, you know, maybe it's a bad read. You can see Eli Brooks, his eyes seen Jonathan Williams there on the block. That's what triggers him to pass it out to Houston. Even if Jonathan Williams is able to get out there and contest that shot, the eyes of 34 down here in the paint, he's still looking here. You got one extra pass here to a guy, mm-hmm. you know, maybe not as good of a, a shooter as Caleb Houston, but still he was like two for three on the day. You know, someone who probably improved quite a bit over the off season, as we've seen um, from his play during this game. And, uh, just this action here with Eli Brooks, everything going on there. Uh, you have still three bodies in the paint, two guys on the perimeter. Uh, you take this shot if you're Caleb Houston every time. And then if not, you got a, uh, a wide open Terrence Williams here as well. And, and no good options for, for Buffalo to close out on that one. And you make the great point about that weak side movement, number 34 on Buffalo being confused. I actually pointed this out in my article um, I, I think Michigan could have done more of this. And I noticed this late in the game. Michigan made an adjustment. And they had some more weak side movement. Weak side movement is really key to do what, exactly what you just said, cause some confusion. So number 34 is stuck in the paint here. He sees this back screen. And like you said, now when Caleb Houston's coming out, Terrence Williams is wide open. He's so focused on guarding the ball that he does, he's not worried about the guy he's guarding. So this action on the weak side, it caused enough confusion where there's another option. And it also makes it harder for them to guard that ball screen. So, I mean, number 34, he didn't even move. He just looked like he's stuck in quicksand. And I'm sure Buffalo had some rule where if there's a ball screen occurring, you kind of just stay there and whatever happens on the weak side doesn't matter. But clearly his his teammate didn't know that. And he went to find Devontae Jones, which absolutely left Terrence Williams wide open. Right. And, uh, even though Caleb Houston, who, as, like you said, is a fantastic shooter, Terrence Williams did improve his jump shot. He worked really hard at it. Um, and I think it'll be really, really viable option as the year goes on. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that was Views from the Bench with C.J. Baird. We got a game coming up on Saturday against Prairie View a 8 p.m. Eastern time. Check out C.J.'s work on the amazingbluereview.com. Really, really great articles, hopefully Many, many more videos to come as well. CJ, appreciate you joining. Where can the fans here find you on Twitter? Yeah, so find me on Twitter at Baird underscore CJ. Uh, Steven and I are putting out some video analysis throughout the season. I'll be writing some articles, getting an in-depth, detailed look at Michigan basketball, things I think they can improve upon, draft profiles, and other stuff as they actually uh, – Go on a pursuit to get another one of these babies. I was going to ring, get a Big Ten championship. I was going to say, go to his Twitter. He's got some really great photos of that ring. And <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm I'm excited to see that man. That'll be that'll be great content. The articles there on the MaisonBlueReview.com. Really, really great stuff. Uh, follow the Twitter of Maison Blue Review at Maze Blue Review. You can follow me at Stephen Toski. Throw the channel subscription while you're there. Check out all the podcasts. Everything we got going is really exciting. Team here. Okay, I've rambled on long enough. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe out there. As always, go blue. Go blue.